Hello, I'm Susan Clinton, and I am going to do a, I'm going to show you a couple of video clips about the rectal balloon catheter that um, I put together for current medical technologies. Uh, the me mechanics of the clinical setup will be covered in one video, and that will be followed by a brief video about balloon catheter rectum intervention and anal canal intervention. For any questions that you may have about these videos or the use of the balloon catheter clinically, or if you're interested in any of my courses, you can reach me at susan at embody-pt.com. These two videos are, are presented by Embodya Academy, where I have an online course called the GI Disorders in the Pelvic Floor. And you can see the link from the, for the course there. If you're interested in my online course there, just let me know at susan at embody-pt.com. Enjoy the videos, and I look forward to any questions you may have. As I get ready to show you this video, I want you to be aware of two things. Number one, I do not have a condom in this video, but I never teach using the rectal balloon catheter, nor do I ever use it clinically without a full condom on the balloon. It goes all the way down to the bottom as, you know, as far as it goes, and that's the link that you need to put the catheter in. Also, you'll see three sets of gloves in this video. I put all three sets on simultaneously, that helps, that keeps me from having to change gloves in the middle of the procedure. Okay, here's the video. Before we start with the mechanics of the balloon catheter, I want you to have a good setup for your lab and how you're gonna work with this. And it's very important that you have three sets of gloves for both hands, something to put your lubrication on, as well as having your balloon, the stopcock, and the syringe available. The reason that we're using three sets of gloves is the first thing that you're going to do before you ever insert the balloon catheter is do a rectal exam to find out, one, are they holding stool in their rectum, and two, which direction your finger goes to avoid the muscle shelf so you don't jam the tube of the catheter into the muscle shelf. So you'll be doing a rectal exam first before you do anything else. After the rectal exam, you take off your first set of gloves. Now you're onto your second set of gloves and it's time to put the condom over the catheter, put it into the lube, raise up their gluteal cheek and insert the catheter in. Once you finish and you get the catheter completely inserted in, you're going to want to remove this pair of gloves. Now you have clean dry gloves to be handling the syringe and the stopcock while you're actually doing the modality of the balloon uh, catheter uh, training. So this section is to show you the mechanics of the balloon catheter. It's important that you understand and play with and realize what happens with the balloon as you manipulate the syringe and the stopcock because you will not be able to see the balloon once it's in the client. So if you're ordering your balloon catheters from Canada, they're gonna come in packages like this and the balloon itself and the stopcock will be inside. The syringe is gonna come in a package like so, and it'll have a little screw tip on the end of it so that it can interface with the stopcock. So when you get the, uh, the, the balloon and the stopcock, just pull it out and screw the stopcock onto the edge of the balloon here and take off any plastic nubbies that may be in the two open ports. And you can leave the switch on the off position here. Take the syringe and just roll it, you know, screw it right on to the stopcock. So now you have a, a mechanism ready to go. So in this position, you'll notice that the off switch is pointing towards the, the balloon, the tube of the balloon. And that means that there's air that can come through this extra port over here that we'll call port two. If the balloon is locked in this position, I can pull the syringe all the way back and not affect the balloon. You can see that the balloon is still deflated. And I can push air all the way into the syringe and not affect the balloon. So effectively that balloon is locked in whatever position we have it locked in. So in order to put air into the balloon, I'm gonna keep the balloon locked and move the, the syringe back to cc's, 60 cc's air. And I'm gonna move the stopcock to the off position at port two. Now that means that I'm going to be able to push air into the, the tube of the balloon and you'll see the balloon filling up. Okay, I can also pull the air 
out of the balloon just as easily because remember the switch is on port two, which allows air to flow easily back and forth from the syringe to the balloon. So when you're working with somebody and you're starting to fill it up and you need to add more air into the balloon, you just need to switch back and forth from this position to locking the balloon to be able to put more air in the syringe. So I'll demonstrate that now. We're going to push 60 cc's of air into the balloon. Good, and I wanna put more in so I'm going to lock the balloon so I can draw the syringe back without affecting the balloon, unlock the balloon, and begin to add more air. And you can see the balloon is getting fatter. Okay, when you get ready, you find the top urge point for them and you get ready to deflate the balloon. You can just keep, the air can come out. So when you have the balloon, um, you're ready to bring the next 60 out, you need to lock the balloon so that you can actually push the syringe all the way back in, unlock the balloon, and continue to allow the air to draw out of the balloon all the way down. Good. Now, when you get these balloons out of the package the very first time, they're not gonna be as deflated as this balloon is. So one of the things that you're gonna to wanna to do, I'm gonna actually show you what the balloon looks like when it comes in the package. It's gonna have, oops, let me unlock it. It's going to have a little bit of air in it, like so. And the syringe will be closed. Um, you know, so you have your syringe off like this. So this is how the balloon will come out of the package. And one of the things that you wanna think about with this is that we wanna really be sure before we insert the balloon in anybody that we deflate it all the way. Because you can see the tube of the balloon is much smaller than my finger, which you would do a rectal exam with. But if we have air in this balloon, it's gonna be very difficult to press it through because remember, air is not compressible. So it's gonna be hard to push this through the anal canal. So one of the things that you wanna do is you wanna deflate that balloon right away. So keep the syringe closed, dial it into the tube, Make sure the balloon is not locked, so you're gonna open the balloon by sending the, the switch to port two, and you're just gonna draw some air back. You see that balloon deflate all the way there? It deflates all the way down. So draw some air off and then lock the balloon, and now you're ready to kind of pull this all the way back here to get started after you insert the balloon because the balloon is effectively locked now and it's completely deflated, and you can see that that's gonna be easy to insert. Once you have it in this position, then you're going to slide the condom down over the whole uh, balloon and as well as the tube. And you're going to be inserting the balloon into the rectum uh, through the anal canal to the edge of the condom. So just a little bit of the ring of the condom is going to be sticking out of the EAS when you get through inserting it in. Remember, we want the balloon up above the muscle shelf, if this was your muscle shelf here, so that the sensory piece that it's only picking up are the pressure receptors of the rectum, and it's not down here in the initial phases for in the anal canal. This part we'll be doing a little bit later when we talk about training uh, the opening and the wave peristalsis effect of the, of the internal and external sphincter. Now we're gonna see the second recording on the, on the interventions. So, what are you going to do when you put the balloon catheter in? If you are looking at a hypo or a hypersensitive patient, the name of the game still remains the same. You want to get the balloon above the muscle shelf so that you're just affecting the tube of the rectum. And what you're going to be looking for is the numbers of when they feel that pressure. We'll be talking more about clinical reasoning um, in the online course, and then you can match this up to that clinical reasoning aspect there. But just for the mechanics of the lab, I want you to think about what you're going after. So the, the three sensations that you're trying to pick up on in the rectum are going to be the very first signal they get of any kind of pressure at all. So as you begin to add air into the balloon, you wanna see what kind of pressure they begin to sense. Then you want to move it up until they feel that mild urge to go to the bathroom. 
do they feel an urge like, oh, you know, kind of that's what it should feel like. I think I need to go to the bathroom. And then you're going to fill it up to their very big urge like, this is it, I have to go. And then you're going to deflate the balloon completely. So it's going to look a little something like this. I'm going to leave the balloon here. We have the balloon locked, the syringe is pulled all the way back, it's inserted into the person with the condom over it, and only the edge of the condom is sticking out of the external EAS. I'm going to unlock the balloon, and I'm going to start filling, and you can kind of see the rate that I will be filling at. It's, you don't go slow because they accommodate too quick, but you don't want to draw, you know, go super fast either. But remember, stool drops into the, into the rectum segment by segment and begins to increase those pressure receptors. So here we go. So at this point, somebody may say to me, oh, I feel it. I feel just a little something going on. Remember to be very careful that you're not moving the tube because the anal canal is extremely sensitive and they'll pick up on the tube in the anal canal rather than the pressure up in the rectum. So you're going to continue. You might note that and say, okay, that's how much they had there. Now we're going to keep going. And perhaps they'll say, Somewhere around here, I think I feel a mild urge to go to the bathroom. We'll call it right there. So we'll mark that down as 50 uh, cc's of air to go to the bathroom, okay? And then I start to push it up to get to that big, big, big urge and they don't have it yet. So now I need to lock the balloon, pull the syringe back, unlock the balloon, and begin to fill some more. Now I really feel like I have to go, right? So you note how much air you've pushed in, plus the 60, and then you start to deflate. So I'll bring it down pretty quickly, because it's more comfortable if we do that. Then I have to fill the syringe up, unlock the balloon again, and then deflate the balloon completely. Good. It's important to go ahead and bring that balloon down into some good amount of deflation because if you're going to pump up the signal, you want to kind of go back up to the, where they were and see if they can feel it a little bit sooner, see if they're more aware of it now that they've actually felt it. Or if you want to desensitize them and they're, only, you know, they're feeling like a strong urge to go, maybe at 40 milliliters or 50 milliliters uh, of air, then maybe you want to like bring it up to not quite so high and see if they can tolerate it and breathe through it and understand it and then let it out and then to go back again and see if they can actually go to a few higher numbers without it um, being very irritable. So you can work this way. You can work this both ways. If you have a hypersensitive anus, after we do the rectal piece of this, we could actually drop down and work on the hypersensitive anus or work on motor control or, or work on defecating the balloon. So for this lab, I'm going to demonstrate by, I'm going to lock the balloon, bring the syringe down. We've got a nice deflated balloon here, and we know that in the body. So I'm going to unlock the balloon, and I'm going to put about 20 cc's of air in right to there. Good. And then what I'm going to do, the balloon is in the body. Remember, the, the, the condom is all the way down here. I'm going to grasp the end of the condom in the tube, and I'm going to pull the balloon back until it engages into the muscle shelf. So now you have lots of choices here. What you can do is you can have them, you know, find out if that really bothers them. And if it does, you can unlock the balloon and deflate it a little bit right there and inflate it a little bit and see if they can get used to or change the sensitivity of that anal system right there as the, as the stool drops onto that. So that's one way you can really work on that. Another thing that you can do is if they have a lot of force production problems, you can actually pull the balloon down with the condom and they can squeeze and pull that balloon back up. And you can kind of pull it down and they can squeeze and pull that balloon back up. So it becomes kind of like a progressive resistive exercise for people who actually kind of maybe have a little feeling there but they, and they want to work and pump up their muscle activity to get used to what does that mean to squeeze and lift that stool up out of the way. The final thing you can do right here is to actually have them defecate the balloon. And now what you're going to do is you're going to grab hold of the condom and the tube and you're going to help them as they begin to generate the intra-abdominal pressure 
and begin to poop the balloon out. So you're going to have them, they're going to maybe do this a little bit and open up, but they can't quite get it. Remember, stage fright exists with this. I don't really ever expect people to, to fully do this by themselves. I always have to assist them a little bit. And then you can try it again a second time. And then the third time, I don't have the condom on, so this is going to make a noise. But then they can bring it all the way through. And then you can take this off and clean it up and do the things that you need to do. So those are some great ways to work with the balloon catheter in people with different kinds of GI dysfunction. Thank you again for watching the videos. I hope they help you with um, the use of the balloon uh, catheter. You can reach me again, Susan at embody-pt.com with any questions, or you can certainly reach me through the portal at uh, uh, Current Medical Technologies. Thank you again.